Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I'm gonna to share with you three different ways to work with bricks in SketchUp. So when I say work with bricks in SketchUp, what I mean is showing bricks on a facade. So brick wall, brick cladding, whatever, even brick paving if you wanted to put it on the floor. And there's a few different ways to go about it, especially considering that bricks, I would imagine you would have a lot of them. So first of all, would you want to model each brick? Maybe, maybe not. Or would you want to go with the texture? Let's compare a few different ways now. What I want to do is first think about this wall and I want to, I'm going to just make this a brick wall and we're just going to pretend like this is maybe a building. So bear with me here. First thing we want to do is think about, well, do I need to draw the bricks? Do I need to come in here and figure out what a brick size is and actually draw them on the wall? Or could I kind of shortcut the process? And as we know, those of you that have already explored the default material library or even found images and textures online, one place to start is right here. We've got a section in the uh, in our materials editor or materials browser for bricks, cladding, and siding. So I'm just going to apply the bricks just like that. Now, the nice thing about using the materials in the library is that they're already scaled. So if I was to kind of check the measurements of one, it would be uh, the scaled to the size of the brick wall. So that kind of saves a little bit of time. So let's kind of go with this gray one here and say, that's my first option, super quick. Now, the challenge or the limitation of just going with whether it's a default library or whether that's one you find online is going to be that you're going to be kind of showing the materials. And you may, especially earlier in the process, may not want to show color yet, or you may want to render it in black and white for some reason and add your own color. If you go to if you go to monochrome mode though, of course the texture is just an image, so it disappears. Now another way to do that, which is to sort of leave the brick line work, but maybe show it uh, in monochrome mode or not worry about the color, which may not be the color that I want, would be to come over here back to the materials editor. And instead of looking for a brick texture, come over here to patterns. So within the patterns, you can see some of these are kind of diagrammatic or construction, maybe document oriented. But you can test out a few different ones, like, for example, I think this one here. So I might try a few different ones, see, depending on whether I want, you know, I want to alternate the coursing, um, or if I want to just kind of stick with something traditional, like this sort of running bond. So let's go with that for right now, because that sort of matches the scale and the look of the brick that I've got over here. Now, the same thing applies with the monochromatic brick pattern or texture is that if you turn, if you go to monochrome mode or you go to shaded with texture mode, you're going to lose the pattern of the brick because there's no geometry. It's just an image. But the nice thing about it is that if you have your shaded with textures on, you've got sort of this black and white brick texture. And that's kind of cool because if you're early in the process and you want to apply color later using Photoshop or hand coloring, um, that's kind of nice. Maybe we haven't picked out which brick that is. We just want the brick to show. So lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at drawing some line work. So let's put our materials tab away and let's draw some bricks. For this, I'm gonna zoom in, just maybe zoom in a little bit here. And I'm gonna start by making a rectangle. I'm gonna create a modular brick and I need to think about, in this case, the not just the brick itself, but the grout in between the bricks. And so that's called nominal size, which means that it's the taking into account the dimensions of both the brick and the grout. In this case, what I'm going to do is type in 24 inches by 8 inches. And so if you're going with kind of a typical standard modular brick, this is kind of a good number to go with, which is a nice round number that you can remember, 8 by 24. So let's go ahead and use the, I'm going to select, use the move tool plus the modifier, which is the control option. And then I'm going to drag a line down and I'm going to hit backspace and three to basically divide that by three. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this using the move modifier. I'm going to copy this side over. This time I'm going to divide this by four. And what I'm getting is sort of a grid of bricks that sort of fits this 24 by uh, eight inch dimension. I don't need all of these. In fact, I only need one brick. Um, I just kind of was using that dimension so I didn't have to do the math. and 
I'm also going to make this brick a component. You can't see it because of the Z fighting because I'm drawing on a surface, but if I double click the whole thing, I can make this a component. And I'm just going to call this brick. I've already got one in there, so I'm just going to call this brick two. And then there we go. Now, this was the nominal size of the brick, so basically that means with the grout. So depending on your grout size, typically 3 8 inch here if you're using imperial units, which means I'm just going to take that off, uh, or 2 8 inch. So I'm going to go, so what would that be if I'm doing my math? I'm going to go 1 8 inch. And then that's going to count for the grouting. Now remember, it's going to double because you're going to put two bricks next to each other. You're going to put one on top. So think about that thickness of the grout that you need. So let's copy that. Don't need those. That was just so that I knew that the brick was sized properly and I didn't have to worry about weird dimensions where we get into fractions of an inch. So now I'm going to lay this out on my wall. Depending on where you want to line it up, you can line it up where the brick ends or the grout ends. In this case, I want the brick to be the edge of the wall, so I'm going to kind of ignore that grout line. And then I'm just going to copy this from the grout edge all the way over. And I don't remember how many I need, so I'm just going to say times 18. That's too many times 17, and that gets me right where I need to be. Of course, maybe it won't be so clean for you. You may have to cut bricks, but in this case, I sized it so that uh, I had an even number of bricks. So this is where it gets interesting as well. We can then decide whether we want to copy one up. In this case, I'm copying it by the midpoint, and then we're going to copy that again, and then times, I think, 16 in this case. Now the problem here is we have, if you're going to cut the brick, then you're going to need a secondary brick module. So one for the main brick and one for a half a brick. I may want to come in here and just hide the edges of the grout. And for the reason for that is because I actually don't really want to see the grout, but I would maybe turn my hidden geometry on. So view, hidden geometry, and then there's my grout. I can still use that to sort of line things up. I just turn my hidden geometry on. And that's nice. So here's a keyboard shortcut. I can see my grout lines for spacing, but in this case, I can just turn them off. Now I've got this one here. I could just cheat it if I was in a hurry and I could scale it, but of course it's going to change a little bit the grout dimensions. You can see it shrunk that grout. So to do this proper, you would want to make this unique and you would want to make sure to turn your hidden geometry on and pull this one over there, just like that. So now we've got kind of a half brick module, we've got a full brick module, and we can just place that in place and slide it in using the hidden geometry as a guide. Now, once you've done two rows in this case, if you're doing a running bond, you could just do two rows and make that a component. So I'm just gonna kind of call this a row or whatever, and then copy this up as many times as I need to fill out my wall. So let's see how many times do I need? Times 12, nope, times 13. Nope, and times 14. There we go, I've rounded out my wall. So the nice thing about this here is that if I go into monochrome mode for any reason, just because I want to get rid of the other colors and textures in my model, I can see that my bricks still show, which is nice. Now, of course, I'm adding a little bit of geometry, um, but it's really not too bad depending on the size of your model. Now, these aren't 3D, these are 2D, so you're really only adding um, maybe eight lines per brick. So just something to think about. Now, if you go to render though, for example, if I was going to go into V-Ray and wanted to render this, you can see that the textures are better than the lines because the textures will show even if there's no geometry, even if I'm in hidden monochrome mode and I can't see it in my SketchUp model. But here I can't see the bricks at all because the lines don't show, the edges don't show when you render. This is the advantage of using a component as a brick. So if we pull this one out, for example, I'll pull this out that same 1 8 inch. And then I'll do that one more time. In fact, you can see this here before we even render it. You can see this in SketchUp by turning the edges off and you've got the shadows on. You can see here that the brick is actually starting to show. If I change the shadow pattern, it will represent. It will represent there. So that's kind of cool. So let's render that one more time and just see the difference. You can see that if I kind of zoom in here, you're getting those highlights and you're getting the shadows. And then if I change the time of day, you're going to get the light will respond on the actual brick. 
Now, if you're worried about the size of it, you could combine these methods. For example, hey, I'm worried about, you know, if I have too much geometry in my model, if I have bricks covering a very large surface area, it might be adding detail that I don't really need. So that's something to think about. Let's just go ahead and show you how to combine methods. You could always go back to using the texture in what's called a working mode and then assign the bricks. For example, I'm going to copy the 3D bricks on top of the texture and I could go ahead and put those on a bricks, a 3D bricks tag. So then when I'm working, I could show just a texture, spin around the model, things are really light, performance is great. And then when I'm ready to render or I'm ready to kick off a final view, I click on render and you can see I've got the 3D bricks there. So if I switched the, to monochrome mode, um, you can see I'm in my 3D, my full 3D bricks. So working mode, just texture, render mode, got my bricks. So really just depends on how you want to organize your model, how many bricks you want to show, and what type of brick, how much control you want over the actual arrangement and the design and the layout of the bricks themselves. So that's it. It's bricks three ways. So the idea of using the colored textures over here, the monochromatic textures or patterns, which you'll find it um, in the same default library, or going in and just making your own brick very quickly using a component and then arraying that component as a module. So whichever method you choose, the point here is make sure you use the one that's working for you. Make sure you use the method that's going to show your design off the best and make sure that you remember that you have complete control over not only what you want to show, but when and how you want to show it. So don't let something like adding a bunch of bricks to your model even worry you. Uh, when you do it like this, you set it up with some tags, apply it to a scene, uh, things are going to run smooth and efficiently. Your model is going to look great. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us that like, share, comment, let me know. Do you work with bricks? Do you just do them in details? Do you uh, model the whole thing, just use line work? I'd be curious to see not just how I do it, but how you do it. Let me know in the comments below. And with that, thanks. See you next time.